Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And this is episode number 33. 33. You got, you got a, a player? <laughs> Brian, Brian Boucher? Yeah, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, obviously this week we'll be talking about the week in review, of course. And then we'll also be talking about Vlasic and him being on the IR as well as Sorensen's new contract. Uh, we'll talk about potential trade targets. And uh, this week coming up in review, we got another, or upcoming games. Yeah. we got two more games coming up. Mm-hmm. And then the All-Star game. Very good. You ready to start the show? Ready. Okay, I'm going to start the, the show a different way. We're going to promote the merchandise at the top. So we have the uh, black, teal, and sil- or silver, sorry, gray shirts that are for sale. We also have, which, what's the other shirt? Uh, a women's deep V cut. Deep. I fixed my hair, but he just threw a hat on. <laughs> you forgot to mention the hat. Well, I didn't forget. I just there's hats too, right? You know, for anybody who didn't get the reference, by the way, um, there was a comment on one of the previous videos where apparently I had said, I corrected and said it's a deep V cut, and that person said this made my day. <laughs> so I just there you go. I just wanted to highlight that too. Yeah, so I don't think anybody got. It. I don't think Thank anyone you did. It. But you know what? Maybe this will get you guys to go back and watch the previous at least two episodes. It's somewhere in the last. It was the last one or episode. two episodes. It's yeah. in the comments. Somebody, somebody <laughs> time stamped it. it. Time yeah. stamped it. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, yeah. So we can review. Yes. <laughs> we uh, we played three games. Uh, some good, some bad. Well, one good, some bad. But uh, Pittsburgh, right? Beat them. Did a pretty good job. That was a, that was a pretty good game. Yeah. It was exciting to watch. It was, it was nice. I don't know if you want to say revenge from two years ago now <laughs> from when we played them in the Stanley Cup Finals, but it's always great to beat Pittsburgh, right. and Crosby, and Malkin. Um, so uh, I thought that they played pretty well. Uh, it was Jumbo's 1,000th game as a Shark. Amazing. And he scored his 10th goal of the season yeah. during it. So uh, it's always good to hit a milestone and um, <laughs> score a goal while yeah. doing it too. So right. uh, good on Jumbo for for 1,000 games in Teal. That's amazing. Um I mean, a thousand games in the NHL is amazing, but for one team, it's yeah. it's doesn't happen very often. So. so yeah, obviously, second man to to do that in Teal. First one, obviously, being Patty Marlowe. But another mm-hmm. big milestone that night, um, Hurdle got his second hat trick. The first hat trick, obviously, we all remember that one, the the four goal game. Right. And uh, so he followed it up with uh, with a hat trick last uh, against Pittsburgh there. Yeah. And uh, one of the goals was a phenomenal one where he uh, knocked Malkin on his butt <laughs> by using his butt. Yeah. And he made the funny comment afterwards. Is yeah, I just used my big, and I can't say the word, but his big butt, basically. Yeah. And uh, it, it knocked Malkin over. Then he made a nice little stick handle move right in the slot there and just made him look silly. He buried it, yeah. Yeah, really, really nice shot. Yeah, so. Hurdle likes to model himself after uh, Yermer Yager, and you should look at uh, Hurdle. <laughs> Hurdle recreated this picture from when Yager was very young uh, in his career, he's he's where what is he wearing? It's, it's I think it's the Czech flag Probably, colors. Yeah. And he's holding a pitchfork with his girlfriend or some <laughs> some girl, and so uh, Hurdle recreated it with his girlfriend. Exact same thing. He's shirtless with a pitchfork. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he wants to model himself after Yermer Yager, and um, that was a very Yermer Yager move uh, <laughs> using his big bum, which Yager was known for doing nice. in his heyday so yeah well uh hurdle was not the only one scoring goals there um actually it wasn't even that it was uh, a, there was a comment after the fact obviously you know jumbo had scored his goal mm-hmm. uh, and it was a really big deal but kane had made a funny little comment during the post game <laughs> yeah. there kane sarcastically said uh <laughs> that he's really sick and tired of jumbo getting all these milestones <laughs> because they keep talking about it in after games and stuff but uh, obviously, it was a joke, and yeah. and they're just having fun. But uh, yeah, Jumbo's hitting a lot of milestones <laughs> this year, uh, and and a lot of celebrations. Um, so it's it's good for for to me. It's good for media to talk about yeah. stuff like we can we can bring it up sure, and, sure. and acknowledge. So um, yeah, good on the players. Yeah, Jumbo probably doesn't really care about all the milestones and whatnot. I'm sure he's just interested in winning. But uh, yeah, it seems like every game he plays, there's another milestone right. that he's he's uh, eclipsed, and and Kane was just kind of like tired of hearing about it. <laughs> apparently, a so. bit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's funny. Not bad, though. Um, yeah, so the other thing was uh, Mark Smith. Smitty was uh, on the color for the radio broadcast with Dan Rusnowski. Yeah. And it was great because, actually, I, I went to the practice. I walked in, and I saw this guy with a mohawk, and I couldn't see anything else. It was <laughs> like a jacket with a high collar and a mohawk. And I'm going like this, looking through like the door, and I'm going, oh, it kind of looks like Evander Kane. Like, <laughs> you know, he's stature and everything, right? And I'm going, oh, that's probably not him. He wouldn't be hanging out outside the rank waiting for anybody to go on. It doesn't make sense. And... You know, I, I 
door opens up and I kind of look and he looks to the side like this and I see his face and I go, that's Mark Smith. <laughs> I go, hey, Smitty. He turns around and I go, hey, what's going on? And so we were sitting there talking for a bit and, and whatnot. And, um, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe one day we'll actually get him on. That'd be great. But um, it was just cool talking with them. Jumbo was, was skating around in the ice. I said this during the live too. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> Jumbo, I don't think he knew that Smitty was there. And he shoots a puck and looks over and he sees him. Smitty! Hey, Smitty! <laughs> he's just like screaming at him and whatnot. It was great. He just, he loves Smitty. He thinks he's one of the, the best guys and, and whatnot. Even after the game, he had said, we're, or maybe it was during the game, he, he told Dan Rizanowski, he said, you know, you got, you're lucky to have him up there. You got a really good good guy in Smitty up there. So, yeah, yeah Jumbo, was, it was great seeing him. Well, they Jumbo. did play together. Yeah, when, yeah, yeah. When, when Joe first came to the team, Smith was, he, Smitty was still playing. Yeah. So he was uh, a couple years, I think, two years uh, yeah. as teammate, two, three years. And they knew each other pretty well, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, he he jumbo and he think he said uh, Vlasic and I asked him about Burns. He goes, no, no, Burns wasn't on the team while yeah. I was on. I was like, oh, that's right. Wow, yeah. yeah. No, it's just really interesting. So anyway, moving on from that game, uh, mm-hmm. we had a game in Arizona. Didn't do so hot. A uh, six three loss. Yeah, it, the numbers look worse than they actually were though. Six three sounds worse than yeah. what it was. Uh, there were two empty netters, so the the Sharks got within a goal with a little less than five minutes left mm-hmm. in the game. Uh, kind of had momentum built, I think, towards it too. Right. It was a back-to-back, though, and in back-to-backs, you don't want to be coming from behind. With five minutes left, you'd rather be leading right. with five minutes left. So um, on the road in Arizona, and that atmosphere is not fun to play in when there's 8,000 people that show up to a game, so it's <laughs> kind of dead. Um, I, not to make excuses, I'm just, just saying what it is. So, um, And Arizona's actually, they've won five of their last seven games as of tonight, so they're not they're not a pushover team by any means. Yeah. And, in fact, they might even be pressing enough to get into one of those wild card spots. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they come down to the wire yeah. towards the end of the season. So um, Arizona's a very good young team, and um, unfortunately for the Sharks, they were on the wrong end of it. So yeah, they yeah didn't win. Second night of a back-to-back, yeah, the last thing you need to do be playing from behind. Mm-hmm. So, um, But like you said, it's it was a lot closer than, than the score indicated. So... Um, Again, there's so much parity in the league. You can't look at a team's record or where they sit in the, in the standings and say, oh, we're just going to beat them. They should be a team that we beat all the time because that's just not the way it works. I mean, we, we've beaten Tampa Bay previously, and should we have beaten them because they have a better record than we do? Well, no. The answer is no. Now, obviously, that's not <laughs> the case in our next uh, game that we played. Right. Uh, played a game in Tampa Bay and had a similar fate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Carlson was scratched, and I think it was last minute during the right. warm-up. So, um I think I think there was some news that he was he wasn't feeling so great and was was kind of something was wrong something yeah. was hurt and they weren't sure if he's going to play. He ended up not playing. Um, the Sharks kind of last minute scratched him and um, they just looked off all night. Yeah, they didn't seem like themselves. Obviously, you, t- you pull a guy who gets close to thirty minutes a game, especially since Vlasic and Braun yeah. have been out. Um, it, you're not going to be able to replace that. And uh, the Sharks did look off, but it was it was weird to see. The Sharks without Carlson now, because you're so used to it. We've been yeah. watching it all season. Um, but there's a noticeable difference of, of the puck not being able to come out of the zone as well, right. or as easy. So uh, he was heavily, heavily missed. And Well, the, one of the things I thought was interesting about that was that even without Carlson, um, Sharks still managed 39 shots on goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, which, I mean, I've been saying you know that, that he brings this presence of being able to move the puck up and out of the defensive side of the, of the zone and bring it into the, through the neutral zone to the offensive side. And even without him there, managing almost 40 shots, it's, yeah. it's pretty impressive, I would say. Um, the, I think the dagger really was that we had four penalties in that game, two of which they, they scored upon. One of them being five-on-three influenced. Yes, we stepped out of the box, but I don't even think we had a guy back in the play by the time they had scored. No. I think we only had three guys in the defensive zone when they scored. So though the guy stepped out of the box, whoever it was, um, that's the right time to score, I guess, like for the Sharks' perspective, is if you're going to score, I'd rather you score as soon as that penalty ends, and then we, we're back to five on five. But, you know, it, it's against that type of offense, it, it's a very high-powered offense. And you, you pointed out a co- the goals that Stamkos has scored. One of them was just a bullet from Ovechkin's office, right? Yeah. And then the other one, Don Squid kind of made a misstep, and Stamkos walked right past him. And he, I mean, his accuracy is insane, the way both, he put those pucks yeah, in. Yeah, both those goals, yeah. and those were kind of the daggers, too, I think, because they were the last two goals of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, put him right in the corner. I mean, he's an elite goal scorer, yeah. and both both those goals showed it. He he put him within, you know, a couple inches yeah. in the corner on, on one corner and then the other corner. So uh, great to see good hockey, yeah. unfortunately, against the Sharks, but 
uh, you're seeing some of the best players. And right now, Tampa Bay is the hottest team in the NHL, and it showed you don't want to give this team power play opportunities, especially five on three power yeah. play opportunities. Um, and the Sharks did that, they got burned from it. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I noticed was the active boards, the very active boards in Tampa Bay, and that's kind of a almost like a home ice advantage for certain teams. So Kane was was the beneficiary of uh, of the active board on his second goal. Right. He missed the net and it bounced right back to him and he tapped it in for the goal. Um, and then the go ahead goal to make it three to two for Tampa Bay was right after that and almost a sim- similar situation where I think Stamkos actually shot it and missed the net and it went behind the net and bounced to the to the other side of the of the goal and and they tapped it in so um that's kind of um if that was at the sap center i don't think those goals are going to be scored i think right. uh, the puck kind of dies a little bit more um i mean not that there's not any bounce back in sap but it's a lot much less it's almost like the active boards in detroit's old arena yeah, they were yeah. known for having very active boards and very and by active boards i mean when the puck hits it it bounces off harder than it does in in other other arenas um, and it really changes the way you play. It's almost yeah. like a faster game. Well, I mean, regardless of, of what is actually happening with the puck, it's the fact that you know what it's going to do, right? Mm-hmm. You know that the puck's going to come off harder. It, it, whether or not that's an advantage, you know, who cares? But it, just the fact that you know in your barn that it's going to do that, the puck's going to do that, you know that when you shoot it, it's going to rebound in a certain way or bounce a certain way, mm-hmm. that really helps you. And, uh, I mean, having 41 games... Uh, at home, obviously, knowing the boards is a, is a major advantage. Yeah. So um, and, the, and the Sharks, I don't think they were really out of this game. I mean, yeah. Kane tied it up 2-2. Then they took the go-ahead goal to go 3-2. But um, to me, the Sharks were still into it going into the third period, yeah. down 4-2. Uh, and, and the third period, I think not having Carlson back there really hurt, obviously. Yeah. Um, just They just didn't seem to... They were, they were making too many mistakes, I feel like. And... and Tampa Bay is not a team that you can really do that to. Right. So, I mean, a lot of people think this is going to be a Stanley Cup final preview. I, I think it's a little too early for both Tampa Bay and the Sharks. I mean, Tampa Bay could hit a terrible stretch. They could get against a hot goalie in the playoffs and not even get out of the you know second, third round and won't we've, even make it to the We've p- certainly finals. seen uh, a team not make it through the first round when they win the President's Trophy. Right. It happens a lot. <laughs> so Us. Washington. Capitals. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, it's. I don't think it's. I don't think they're a for sure bet um, to make the finals. That's fair. They they have a good bet, yeah. but it's not certain. I think you know Washington's just as good as they were last year, and they won last year, yeah. and they played Tampa last year, I believe, in the conference finals. Um, I can't remember. Potentially, yeah. but um, yeah. So anyway, I, it, it's a little too early to tell for That's the true. finals. Very good. Well, uh, we were missing Eric Carlson that game, which is unfortunate. We are still missing Marco Bord Vlasic. He has actually been placed on the IR now. He was day to day. Braun was on the IR, and he's come back into the lineup. He's played uh, a couple games now. Mm-hmm. And I always thought that basically going to the practices and seeing Vlasic, uh, he wasn't even handling the puck before. I think I had tweeted this out as well. He wasn't using his left hand at all. Um, he was. Basically doing skating drills, not doing any sort of puck handling drills, not doing any sort of passing drills, not doing any sort of shooting drills. He was doing nothing with his hands. And when he was tapping the puck, it was when he only had his right hand on the stick and he was just kind of one-handing it. He was babying that left side. Um, I always thought that it should have just been Vlasic on the IR and Braun as day-to-day. Yeah. Uh, going to practices recently, though, I've seen him doing all kinds of stuff, uh, shooting, passing, stick handling, um, lots of skating drills where he's going in circles and he's holding the puck and you know certain which ways, um, even juggling the puck off the blade of his stick, which is not something that's part of practice. It's just him having fun. So obviously he's feeling well enough to do something that's not required of him. He's just goofing off. Yeah. So hopefully this means Vlasic, uh, at least from a physical sense, will be back sooner than later, which would be great. And the uh, the break that we're going to have here for the All Star Game that should give him some extra time. Um, to, to really recuperate, at least from a physical sense. I still think that there's something mentally going on with him. I don't know quite what it is. Obviously, I'm, nobody else really seems to know. He's the one that's going to know that. Right. Um, and if there's not anything mentally going on, okay, he's just having a bit of a stinker of the first half here, and I just can't wait for him to get back. But in I think he was playing better right before the injury, though. Yeah. Like about two, three weeks before the injury. Yeah. Um, he seemed to be doing better, I think. Which is unfortunate because then he's now taken a, a turn for the worst yeah. because he's back on the IR. So, uh, regardless, 
Uh, Middleton is uh, has been called up. I think mm-hmm. that was uh, today or yesterday. Yeah, in the last game that he played, he yeah. had about five, six minutes of ice time. <laughs> so I don't yeah. expect much from Middleton. No. I don't think. I, I don't even know if he'd get up to ten minutes in the next game. If he even plays, who knows, you know. Right. Maybe he won't even get in the lineup. But um, good to good for him at least to get called up. He's it's a good success story in the NHL yeah. and those are always fun to, to read about and, and learn about. But um yeah, I just I, I don't know. I, I think Vlasic it, it'll be good for Vlasic to stay out the next two games. Yeah. And get full recovery. Um, same with Carlson. Right. Um, I just think that uh, having that big break, you're not going to get that big of a break without missing too many games. In this case, it'd be two mm-hmm. on Monday and Tuesday. Um, so I think uh, getting both Vlasic and Carlson back after the break would be fantastic for the Sharks. Yeah, I agree. So moving on from that, uh, less depressing news. Um, Sorensen got a contract extension, two years, $1.5 million a year. I think that's a great value for a guy that's shown that he can play with, uh, well, was playing with Jumbo Definitely. most recently, right. yeah, pretty pretty consistently. So. Yeah, he's a great third-line addition. Um, mm-hmm. I think when he first came to the team, he was looking to be more like a fourth-line guy, um, getting less minutes, and he's he's been playing well and um, gives us a little dangerous look on the penalty kill mm-hmm. with his speed. Um, he's got a good scoring touch, so I think uh, realistically we can look at if he can get us 15, maybe even 20 goals in a season as a third line guy. I think that's that's a really good value at Absolutely. one million and a half a year. And mm-hmm. he was at the league minimum before that, so seven hundred thousand dollars. So he's getting a you know double pay, and <laughs> it's. It's, uh, I think, well worth it. Yeah. I think he, he brings a lot to the team. Yeah, I agree. And I, I saw some comments saying, you know, just like Doug Wilson to overpay, you know, a, a fringe, like, third-line player or whatever. But I don't I don't see this as an overpayment. I think this is a yeah. guy that brings quite a bit to the offensive side, and you can play him up and down the lineup. I mean, it's I think it's good value. I, I'm with you on that. He's been playing well, and I don't think uh, salary is not directly tied to point production. True. I mean, especially for these third and fourth line guys, they're not they're not going to be getting you tons of points. Mm-hmm. Now, I just said fifteen to twenty goals would be great, mm-hmm. um, but that's just not that's not his entire game. He's not just doing point right. production. So um, he brings a lot of different things to the team, especially on the penalty kill. Right. So yeah. One other thing about goals that we'll be talking about here, and uh, there's not much to say, but we are on Pavelski <laughs> goal Pavelski watch. Pavelski goal watch. <laughs> and unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not moving anywhere on this week, yeah, so uh, he's yeah. still at 26 goals. That's a shame. Uh, I yeah. had said last last week, you know, I would feel a lot more comfortable with him getting to 40 if he had scored more goals that week. Uh, he only got the one in those four games. Uh, we've gone another week and no goals here, so one yeah. goal in the two weeks that we've been talking about it. So, you know, you you're, might be right here. You might say 40 is not a lock. You know, 30 seems pretty, pretty still doable, obviously, because he's yeah. at 26. But maybe 40 might be a little bit, I don't know. Out of reach? Not quite out of reach. But I just don't know if he'll go... Yeah. He's not going to surge past yeah, 40 yeah. and get like 50. Right. 40 is still, still realistic, mm-hmm. but... Um, just goes to show, man. More. Yeah. It just goes to show you've got waves. you got ups and downs. You can get hot. You can get cold. Look at Timo right now. Yeah. Timo's been stuck. He's frustrated. Yeah, he's, he's getting very frustrated. I mean, not to say Pavelski's going to go that cold in that big of a stretch, but mm-hmm. goal scores go up and down. Evander Kane's another one who... Yeah. He was on pace for 82 goals in the beginning of the season and then had a big cold streak, and now he's hot again, and he's right. he's up to, I don't know how many goals he's up to, but um, he's he's hot streak right now. Yeah. So um, goal scorers tend to do that. That's the way they go. Yeah, <laughs> and with that up and down, the hot and the cold, you get a lot of, oh, he sucks or he's great or whatever, and trade talks and whatnot yeah. are part of that as well, right? Yeah, so, sure. So I know last episode I had said, okay, guys, calm it down with the, the trade talks and everything, but it's been a hot topic, so we're just going to jump on that, that bandwagon. And, and well, the trade deadline's coming up yeah, soon. That's, 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 and it's getting more and more heated. We're so. six weeks away from the trade deadline, mm-hmm. but, you know, people are starting to talk. So um, one of the things I thought was interesting, um, DW had reached, Doug Wilson had reached out to <laughs> Pittsburgh, <laughs> as if nobody knows who DW is. Right. Uh, Darkwing Duck. Anyway, um, he, he reached out to Pittsburgh. Checking in on uh, Derek Broussard, yeah. which I think is it could be a pretty good fit. He could add some pretty good depth. And some people saying he's too old, too washed up, or has been, or whatever. I don't think so. We've been talking about it would be a veteran yeah. winger or centerman, who knows. And he kind of plays both. He's, mm-hmm. he's a centerman, but he can play on the wing, obviously. And the Sharks tend to do that where they have two centers almost on every line. Um, and a lot of that is for face-offs. Oh, yeah. and, and the Sharks usually do fairly well in the face-off circles. So... Um, 
I think Derek Broussard would be a good addition. Now, what we would have to give up for him, right. I don't know. Um, but there's been rumors that he's not a very good fit in Pittsburgh, so right. he's most likely going to be on the way out. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't. I could see him being a, a good potential trade target. Yeah. Now, how popular that's going to be with all the other teams in the league will determine the value and what would have to be given up. So right. um, I'm sure the Sharks aren't the only ones looking into Derek Broussard, and it's also coming from a team, Pittsburgh, who. They're in right now a wild card spot, but most likely they're going to be right. in a playoff spot. So yeah. um, it's kind of weird to see a team in the playoff spot being a seller. Yeah, that, no, that's that's a very good point. And and Doug Wilson's done that before. You know, like a, a guy like Douglas Murray, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. It was just a guy that didn't really fit with the team at the time, and so that piece was a part that he sold off. And that people always had said, you know, we've. Um, added by subtracting. We've gotten better by um, getting a little bit lighter, and um, there's no knock on Douglas Murray there, but I think in that sense, considering the fact that we got two seconds yeah. for, for Douglas Murray and it made us a, a lighter, faster team at the time, um, that was a really good move. So Pittsburgh might be ready to do something similar with Derek Broussard. Um, another guy, though, that we had heard a little bit about here and there, and it sounds like he's you know would be pretty good value, but again, how much are you going to have to give up? Are other teams going to be able to do it uh, better than we can? Ryan Dezingle. Right, and he scored against the Sharks when they yeah. were in town uh, last week, two weeks ago. Yeah. So um, I think Sharks fans are a little bit more familiar with him now than they were a month ago. Um, now, Ottawa, are they going to want to deal with San Jose again and Doug Wilson? <laughs> because not to say that he fleeced them to get Carlson, but it's looking like uh, the Sharks got the better end of the deal. So, you know, you never know if... if if there's any bad feelings with with the Ottawa uh, GM or not, um, the other thing is same thing. He could be a hot commodity at the trade deadline or or even before. Right. Um, and you don't know what other teams are going to be offering Ottawa. And obviously they're going to want to get the better deal. They don't really care where they're going to go as long as it's not a rival and um, they're not going to try and help another team. So it's not like I was thinking about this earlier today about you know some people are throwing out these trades that are just <laughs> wow. Like, uh, I think tonight Del- on the live, oh, okay. uh, LeBanc for Wayne Simmons. Simmons straight like, up. <laughs> like Le- well, they're like LeBanc, like Wayne Simmons is a definite upgrade over LeBanc. You are correct. That is a very big upgrade over LeBanc. However, I don't think Philadelphia is going to trade Wayne Simmons for Kevin LeBanc straight up. Yeah. Um, even with draft picks, they're going to want a first round draft pick, yeah. which the Sharks don't have this season or next. I don't think... Philadelphia would settle for a first round draft pick in two years from now. Right. So, um, or even three years from now. So I, I just don't think um, those higher end guys, I don't, I don't see coming in. So Wayne Simmons is one. Um, Panarin is another one. Right. Bobrovsky, still people are still calling for Bobrovsky, which I, just baffles my mind. I had heard Adele for Bobrovsky straight up. Uh, and I'm, I'm just. Yeah. Well, it was because the reasoning was that because Bobrovsky wasn't playing out the way that Columbus thought that he would. And so he's not playing well enough. They'll probably ship him out, and that just doesn't make any sense. Right. So and we kind of was not even close. I so. think we threw this out on Twitter yeah. during the week um, to for you to hit us up with like just trades, <laughs> bad trades that you hear from other people, right. and they're laughable. And what we're gonna do, what Paul's been doing, is going on NHL 19 <laughs> and trying to make the trade, and then screenshotting it, saying uh, you're no. not even in the ballpark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and, and we always we we joke about uh, people being GMs on video game. It's not video game GM or whatever, but which I'm for. We, I love it. We we yeah. play video games and we do the GM thing too. So it's not like we're trying to knock you. It's yeah. just in real life, it doesn't really happen this way. So anyway, if you have any bad trades that you've heard, let us know in the comments and and we'll run them through this week on Twitter and or we'll post it on Twitter. Yeah. Um, or wherever else, I don't know. Well, one other guy, I think Dzingel would be a pretty good one, but he's he's also pretty young, and like you said, he was I think he was 26 years old. Could be a hot commodity for some of these other teams that are trying to make the playoffs, and if they can get their hands on a guy like Dzingel, who's you know younger, he's got a bit of a scoring punch. Mm-hmm. I think he has 19 goals in what 36 games, something like that. Yeah. Um, he's he's a good player, so I don't know that San Jose, not even that Ottawa wouldn't want to trade with San Jose, but what would we have to give up to get him and. Even if we have value for it, does another team have a little bit more value that they'd be willing to throw at him that we couldn't, right? Right. So that's kind of the thing to keep in mind as well. Uh, another player that I had seen, and I haven't seen anybody else talking about this guy uh, just yet, so I'm going to pat myself on the back just a little <laughs> bit. But uh, Marcus Johansson, actually, yeah, uh, from New Jersey Devils. He's 28 years old. He's Swedish, 
which is great, <laughs> you know. Maybe we'll get an influx of Swedes yeah. coming our way because of Carlson. There's uh, the S- Swedes and Finns on the Sharks now. We've got lots of, of European players. Yeah. Um, I think he would fit right in in the locker room uh, between Eric Carlson, Mer- Melker Carlson, and Marcus Sorensen. Um, there's a mm-hmm. lot of Swedish guys, and he can, you know, go ahead and do the Swedish talking back and forth. And I know they do that sometimes. But um, uh, Johansson, well, no, they, they love to in right. their own tongue. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so Marcus Johansson, yeah, I mean, he's he hasn't been a, a huge offensive punch for New Jersey, and he's been a little bit injury prone. And I think that's the one thing that I would be most concerned with is uh, we can't have a guy come on board and be injury prone when we've got Carlson out for – uh, a game the other day, and right. you know he's maybe got something wrong with his ankle because Kurz has said he was limping. And then you've got Vlasic who's been out, Braun was out. You know, it just we don't want to bring in a guy that might be injury prone. But if he can get himself healthy and stay healthy, um, this could be a guy that would work out really well. He fits within the deadline cap space mm-hmm. in terms of his his uh, cap numbers that, that he's owed his salary. He's also a centerman, left wing and right winger. Now his centerman skills in terms of face off face offs are not good. Not so <laughs> hot. He said 40, 40 one, his career face off yeah. is 41%. So, so not, not very good. good, but we're not really looking for centerman right now. We're looking for a left winger or a right winger, probably a left winger. I think, I think left would be more. Yeah. yeah. So more but he's, he's he's a playmaker. He's a guy that looks and finds other guys and gets them the puck and it hasn't really worked out in New Jersey, but San Jose is supremely more talented, I think, up and down the lineup, and we can find a spot for him, even if he doesn't play great on, like, the Couture line. You know, if he, he's a guy that you can push down a little bit and maybe limit his ice, uh, or his ice time, I should say. Um, he could be a good addition to the team, and his numbers are down a little bit. I think they might be willing to to make a good trade and at a at a good discount for what I he's know, actually. It's worth. unfortunate because he played his entire career in Washington <laughs> up until last season, and Washington wins the cup, and it was his first year on the Devils. So right. um, poor guy missed out on getting a ring, but <laughs> say la vie. I Maybe guess. they don't get a ring with him. Who knows? Right. In which case, do we want him? Right. I don't Bad know. luck. I don't know. <laughs> you could say that about the entire Sharks roster because yeah, yeah. we've never won a cup. So well, the entire Shark roster is almost in the All Star game. Um, so That's true. Burns, Carlson, Pavelski. Uh, they were talking about potentially getting Logan Couture in there. They're trying to get him to vote to vote in. Yeah, but uh, he didn't instead, get that. Drysaddle went right. in, right? And I think that's deserving. a little bit more deserving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Drysaddle's having a really good year. Yeah. Uh, alongside McDavid, so it's good for Edmonton to get. Two. I mean, the Sharks don't need four guys at the All Star game. I think it's a little sure greedy. <laughs> sure. I don't know. I just think. No, it's greedy. I, it is. It's totally greedy. But it's at home. That's the thing. Right. Yeah. But they might end up with only two now. This is true. Carlson may not play. I don't know if it would be good or bad for him to sit out. If he's hurt, obviously it would be good for him to sit out and rest up. Um, we talked about this during the live. I don't know because I know Vetchkin already claimed that he wasn't going to play, so right. he's going to get. I don't know if it's a suspension of a game. Um, yeah, it's one game. Right, but I don't know if it's actually considered a suspension where he forfeits his salary oh. or something else, but um, he has to sit out a game because he's not hurt. So I don't know if Carlson will have to sit out a game after the All-Star game because if he didn't show up and play. So um, I'm not quite sure. I'll have to look that up yeah. later. But um, anyway, Carlson, if he's hurt, I, in, let's say he doesn't play Monday and Tuesday, doesn't play in the All-Star game. That Same with Vlasic. Yeah. He's going to have almost 10 days off. So, um, A lot he, of recovery time. Tons. Yeah. And and if he's... Maybe he's not completely injured, but he's hurting. Yeah. You're going to get... You know, all those bangs and, and everything are going to be out by the time you come back and play. So, um, you're not going to have that big of a break without going on IR uh, the rest of the season or in playoffs. So, it'll right. be a good stretch, or it'll be a good time to recover to go into the very long stretch of the end of the season and into playoffs. And if Eric Carlson doesn't play that game, they were talking about, well, Brody was trying to say, Logan Couture should be the guy that steps in, but I think there's another deserving guy. And most of the community, not just, well, not, not even just NHL community, but the San Jose community even says the same thing. It really should be Mark Giordano. Right, and I don't yeah. think you'd replace a defenseman with a forward anyway, right. so it would be another defenseman. And he was, a, I think it's a little slight that he's not in it because he's having a very yeah. good season. Um, also in the Norse Trophy discussions, I yeah. believe, early on, so far at least. Number two in points, I believe, behind Burns. Yeah. So, um, yeah, definitely deserving of, of Giordano. And, yeah, it's it's kind of odd that he wasn't in there in the first place, but with Eric Carlson potentially stepping out, 
this would be his opportunity to step back in. I, mean, I, under, really I understand cares, why Carlson was in, yeah, because he's also kind of you know he had such a big big fan base in Ottawa, so yeah. you're going to get a lot of a big draw, and he's a big a big name in the NHL. So um, it's obvious that he is an all star, and right. and at least he's been playing like it for the last two months oh, now. Yeah. Um, so I mean, he jumped into scoring way up in scoring. So um, yeah, so I don't. Uh, we don't know yet if he's going to miss it or not. Um, in fact, we don't even know if he's going to miss the next two games or not. Um, but if he is not healthy and he's limping around like Kurz was saying, then yeah. it'll be good for him to get a long break and yeah. rest. One other thing that I wanted to bring up about the All-Star game was the jerseys. Now, you know a little bit more about the jerseys than I do, but it, from my understanding is they made them from plastic that was recycled from the ocean or something? I don't know or? if it was actually from the ocean okay. or if it was just recycled plastic, okay. but there is right. recycled plastic in it. Um, and they're kind of grayed out jerseys. And what's cool what they're doing is it's the it's their own team's jersey. Right. So everyone from Calgary, from Edmonton, they're gonna have their own team jersey, but it'll be everyone will be like in the lighter one, right? right. And then um, uh, each jersey, which is cool, it has a little teal in the collar. <laughs> so there is teal on every single jersey, just very subtle. Um, everything else is kind of black, white, grayish <laughs> colors, uh, but yeah. they look sharp. And I think one of the reasons they did it is instead of having the NHL Crest logo on it, who who wants to buy that, right? Like yeah. Maybe you have a smaller market, but now yeah. you're making team jerseys of the All-Star game. It has the team logo on it. And I think they look pretty sharp and, and really nice, nice. Um, that it makes more people would want to buy it. So I bet the jersey sales for an All-Star game jersey is up. It's an excellent point by you. Yeah. yeah. No, I like that. And I like that it is it is the their own team's uh, logo. I mean, apart from jersey sales, that that aside, right? I think that it's nice to be able to skate out and represent not your conference or your division, but your team. Right. That's what you're there for. During the skills competitions, they're wearing their their home jerseys, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's they're proud to to show that they're from Chicago or from St. Louis or from you know, Calgary or wherever else. And in the game, that this allows them really to do that, and it does it in such a fashion that again, all the dark jerseys are on one team, even though the logos are all different. All right. the light jerseys are their own team, even though the logos are all different. And it doesn't it doesn't make it hard for them to play together while still representing their own teams. And so I just really like that. I think it was a great move by the NHL and in the way that they put that together. Yeah, so, they're classy looking jerseys. Yeah. They're nice. Really, very nice stuff. So, uh, All Star Game is coming up very soon. Uh, we hope to have something uh, special for you guys during the All Star Game. We don't know what we'll be doing exactly, but uh, <laughs> stay tuned for that. Yep. Um, promises of nothing, and that's always a seller. All anyway, right. uh, we have a couple more games this week um, before the All Star break, though. Yep. So, and they're again a back to back on the road. So it's uh, we can't catch a break. No, <laughs> no, I can't. It really can't. Yeah. Uh, at least. It was two days in between games, and it right. went from Tampa Bay to Florida. So I think they're in near Orlando. I'm not even sure actually where the Florida Panthers are. No. I don't I'll think anybody the does. <laughs> the Floridians probably don't right. know where the Florida. Like, oh, we have two hockey teams in Florida. <laughs> huh? Yeah, they might be on their way out anyway. The Panthers. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, anyway, playing the Panthers on Monday, <laughs> and uh, Panthers are a. I think they're a better team than Arizona. Okay. I think they have a lot more skill than Arizona, but kind of an Arizona type team where they're they just can't seem to put it together yeah. towards the bottom. Um, but they have a lot of skilled guys, so not a team to take lightly. Um, another team though that just doesn't draw fans right. for whatever reason. Tampa or not Tampa, but Florida people just don't like their teams. Yeah. So um, I guess it's too sunny and too nice, and nobody <laughs> wants to go inside into an ice box. So. Uh, so yeah, they're playing Florida Panthers. Um, so they Monday. play them. They play them Monday, and then the next day, Tuesday, uh, they go straight over to DC, and they're playing the the <laughs> the, what, the returning Capitals, champions. Yeah, 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 defending champions. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Um, Washington Capitals in Washington. Um, it this is almost like a scheduled loss. You know, back to back, and you're you're traveling and going to DC, <laughs> and you're playing the defending champs. It, the whoever did the shark scheduling this year, I don't even know if it's actually a person or if it's just a computer that spits it out. Because I mean, they have to base it on what's going on at the arenas. Because yeah. there's already schedules for <laughs> events at the arenas. I know SAP's like that. Right. Um, so it, there's a lot of stuff that it gets juggled around in, into making the schedule. It's but probably a computer in LA. No, probably that does, <laughs> right. does the scheduling. Yeah. <laughs> 
So it, it's it's unfortunate, but um, it would be great to see the Sharks go in and beat Florida. I'm sure they're going to want to make a statement game in a way yeah. where they're going to gather everyone together, and depending if Carlson is going to play it or not, um, they're probably going to have some meetings and be like, okay, we really need to take it to the Panthers and, and get some points on the board. Right. And then uh, going into Washington, hopefully Washington, you know, if Ovechkin, he already made plans to go... I forgot where it was. I want to say it was Hawaii. Vacationing, no. though. Thornton said he was going to Hawaii, yeah. right? Yeah, Ovechkin's like, no, I'm taking this time off. So <laughs> maybe he's already, you know, you know, when you're at work, right? You're at work yeah. and you're about to go on vacation. <laughs> yeah, you're just like, eh, I'm mentally checked out. I don't I don't want to do anything today. Maybe that, that, that'll be like the, the Capitals because they're at Who home knows? and they can just go off to do what they yeah. want. Whereas the Sharks are like, okay, this is it. You know, we're going to, this is our last chance to, or our last work yeah. thing to do and then we'll go home and do wherever we or we're gonna well, go. And I think it's, I mean, you're kind of writing them off, but I think it's a good mentality to have. <laughs> like, look, we're, we're going to play Florida Panthers, who are not exactly the best team in the league, and then we're going to follow it up the next day, traveling the entire East Coast uh, to get up and play the defending champs. So let's put everything we have into getting two points <laughs> against the Panthers, because if we run out of gas and then we have to play the, the Capitals after that, you know, we don't want to lose both games. So I think we see Aaron Dell against Florida Ooh. and Jones against the Capitals. That's what I would do. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. I kind of think to reverse that. I think if you want to get your two points and you really, that's that's the thing you're trying to guarantee is getting the best chance of getting two points, you're going to put your best goaltender against the team that you think you're going to beat and then take the back-to-back. If you think it's a scheduled loss, why know. would you waste it with Martin Jones? I don't know, because because they've already tried Aaron Dell in Calgary. Okay. Um was that on New Year's Eve because they wanted to see if he can handle the big game and okay. he couldn't. So I think um, uh, Jones just played against uh, who was Tampa Bay, ago. right? And and that's fine. Yeah. But the going into a back to back and he got throttled for six goals. I think you give him a break. Give Aaron Dell Florida, and I think you give Jones to Washington. Okay, that's what I think. I, Dell's not a terrible goalie. No, he's so, not. You're not. It's oh. not like you're throwing a terrible goalie at a terrible team. Yeah. You're just throwing your back up against. Yeah. A okay team. No, I hear you. I, I still for for if I'm trying to guarantee that I've got at least two points coming out of this trip, this back to backer, I'm throwing my best goalie at the easiest team. That's to me. That's Florida. not what teams usually do. Though. No, they don't. Yeah. So I. I don't know. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we shall see. We'll see. Let us know what you think in those comments down below. Also, in the description down below, you will see a link for the Sharks Reddit Discord channel. Now, if you're not used to Discord or you have any idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> don't worry about it. But it's essentially like a chat app where it's something that we use all the time to help each other with uh, the edit notes and everything else that we right. do for the we show. We use it for the whole show. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually we do. Yeah. So, um, But there's a, a server for the Sharks Reddit Discord people. So... If you use Discord or if you're on the Sharks Reddit and you just want to be able to chat with all these people in more real time, please go ahead and check out that link that we're going to put down there. And uh, there's probably some way that you can go through joining right away off of that link, I'm assuming. Yeah, Yeah, so we'll help you out if need be. But um, go ahead and check that out. There's some really good folks in there, and um, they have lots of good things to say. You're in there a a decent I'm in there quite a bit, yeah. Yeah. They have a a channel that's called The Tank, and anytime they're playing, it's just dedicated to chat during the game. So that's all separated from just the normal uh, banter back and forth. So really cool place to, to check out if you're into that kind of thing and just wanted to kind of promote those guys. During games, you're usually in Discord on that channel. And I'm yeah. usually on Twitter. Twitter, yeah. <laughs> I, I prefer Twitter, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Same same thing, different medium. Sure. So whatever. So anyway, I just yeah. wanted to plug those guys because they've been awesome. And uh, anytime I can help the community grow a little bit, I- I'd like to. So mm-hmm. um, you guys can help us grow as well by subscribing and telling all your friends about us. That would help us out a lot. So just throwing that out there too. Yep. Anything else you want to um, I guess just I'll go back to our swag thing again. Oh, yeah, you can yeah, go yeah. buy our stuff <laughs> in our store. Uh, you can check it out. The link will be right here, thefinfactor.com. And uh, we have black shirt, uh, white, no, <laughs> Black shirt, teal shirt, gray right. shirt, uh, a women's black V cut, deep V cut, a hat, <laughs> and we have stickers. And um, anyway, yeah. if you buy anything and you you get it, that'd be fantastic. Thank you, first of all. But uh, take a picture of it and send it to us, and we'll highlight it in the show. That's the bigger thing. If you guys are getting any of our gear, please do uh, take pictures and send it to us. We'd love to see you guys. We've got somebody that's in Ottawa, and Chris, if you're listening on the show right now. Um, please 
buy a shirt, take a picture from Ottawa. <laughs> so I want to see Sharks territory in Ottawa. Okay, so I mean we basically have Sharks territory in Ottawa. I don't know if we can is. ship in Canada yet, but we'll oh, really? figure that out. We will figure that out. <laughs> we'll get it close to the border. You can just run over right. with a mule or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> is there uh, anything else you want to talk about? Are we that's good it. there? Yeah. All right. So we've we've plugged the merch. <laughs> Very good. Uh, I guess that's it. So thanks again for tuning in. Episode thirty three in the books. We will see you guys next week. Next week. Bye bye. bye. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.